Okay, we pick up from where we left off, and uh, this is about uh, uh, our study on receiving God's guidance. How many of you have been tracking, studying, uh, doing your own study? Okay, uh, don't raise your hands. Uh, you know, but I, it, this is a very important topic, right? You go to any youth camp, and uh, if you have an open forum, the question would be, you know, how do I know God's will? And you know where they are coming from. What they want to know is, how do I know this is the right person to marry? Right? So the question there would be, you know, how do I know God's will? It's very troubled, right? So God's guidance, we know, is a very important topic. We all want to, you know, know God. We want to delight in his ways. We want to please him, right? And uh, this study has really, for me personally, it has expanded my understanding of receiving God's guidance, Right? The different ways through which God brings his guidance to us. He's a God who wants to guide us. We looked at the several promises that he's a God who wants to counsel us. He want, he's a God who wants to guide us. Right? We saw that he guides us by his word. He guides us by the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and, and so on. The voice of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, dreams and visions, prophecies, angels, and so on. Right? So today we're going to look at uh, two other uh, topics or two two ways by which God guides us, okay? And the first one is how God guides us through his counsel, godly counsel or godly wisdom, right? Uh, he guides us. We, might, we may not necessarily think, you know, can really God guide me through that? Can God bring in his guidance through counsel? Of course he does. Of course he does. We all, you know, stand in need of wisdom, stand in need of counsel at times, and God brings in his counsel. And he brings it in many ways. He might do it sovereignly through the work of his spirit, but also he brings in counsel through his people, right? Through people who have a close walk with God, who have a deep understanding of his word, who have a history with God, and who have the wisdom of God. So he brings in counsel, and we're talking about godly counsel, which means that there could be something called ungodly counsel also, right? So can everyone say together, godly counsel? Okay, so we're talking about godly counsel, which originates from God, which brings about the purposes of God, which fulfills his purposes, godly counsel. So he brings this to us through his people, which means that when it comes to counsel, when it comes to receiving anything, you know, I need to have a willing heart. I need to have the humility to receive, right? I need to be, I need to go before him with open hands. I can't go with closed hands. I can't go with my agenda. I need to be willing. I need to be ready to receive. So that's something that's on our part that we need to do. That should be the posture of our heart if you want to call it that, to receive godly counsel. Let's look at a few scriptures, and we're looking at uh, these verses from Proverbs, uh, from the book of Proverbs. Okay, Proverbs 11 and verse 14 says, where there is no counsel, the people fall, which means that when there's counsel, it makes us stand, right? Where there is no counsel, people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. It's like a safety net. It's like something that holds, holds up, there is safety. Now it could be a, you know, a, a difficult decision, it could be a difficult proposition, it could be a difficult choice. Where there are a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Again, reminding us, we're talking about godly counsel. The wisdom, the advice that comes from the heart of God. So there is safety. Proverbs 15 and verse 22, without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Referring to the plans. You know, we might have many plans. We might have great plans for the future. We might have, you know, a lot of things in mind we want to do. Here, scripture reminds us, but in the multitude of counselors, the plans, they are established, made firm made strong, so that they can come to completion or maturity, the plans that we have 
first of all, they'll be initiated and also they come to maturity or completion. Proverbs 19 and verse 20 says, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. So developing the ability to listen and receive. You know, can we say that together? Listen, receive. You know, how many of us are great listeners? You know, some of us can just listen. Some of us cannot. You know, you hear something that the person says and immediately there are 10 things that we want to say. There are 10 things that we want to add on. And it's great, but we need to be listeners in order to receive, right? Which means that I need to develop that ability to listen. You know, there could be something very annoying about that, maybe, about maybe some mannerism. That person could be saying, you know, like you know, you know, you know, you know. But the fact is, I receive. You know, I just kill that thing, kill that flesh that wants me to shut down and I listen. So we, which means we need to develop that ability to receive, to listen. I remember, you know, working with a, a, a former colleague of mine who had always had a lot of things to say, right? Every time we would meet and he would always say, you know, hey, Jay, you know what, this. And so, uh, you know, I was really tired uh, and one day we were just about to drive from one place to another and we just got into the car and again he started, hey, Jay, you know what? And I was thinking, oh, here it comes again. And I was all set to press pause. Or I was all set to just press, you know, power button off. But God started speaking. The Holy Spirit said, listen to what he has to say. Just listen to what he has to say. Very clearly in my heart, right? Listen to what he has to say. I quickly, you know, repented and I said, yeah, yeah, go ahead, just tell me. I'm all ears. So, listening, very important. Maybe we don't listen because we don't want somebody controlling me. Maybe we don't want to listen because you're saying, you know, my Google and I, my Google. You know, I, I can check it out. I can, you know, see a YouTube video. I can DIY. I can do that. But Google is also not, you know, reliable. If you want to check out the lyrics of a song, for example, you check out, you know, you just say, okay, ah, oh God. You can do it right now. Awesome God, you know, lyrics. It gives a lot of links, a lot of pages, right? But then the words also come on the screen or right on top. Okay, now they have that feature that words come and then followed by the links. You check out that. You check out what comes right on top. Most of the time, I'm not saying all, most of the time, the lyrics somewhere, there is something wrong. Okay? So the thing is this, that we need to be willing, ready, to receive from people. And especially, God uses people who have a proven walk with them, who are consistent, who have a history with them. Men and women of character, right? Who are full of the word and the wisdom of God. Okay, plans are established by counsel. Uh, Proverbs 20 and verse 18. Plans are established by counsel. By wise counsel, wage war. So the counsel that we receive is actually like ammunition or arsenal that we use in a battle. It's like that. Right? So we're looking at scripture which talks about the value of wise counsel. So if it's an arsenal or, or a weapon, then in a war-like situation, in a difficult time, you know, we would definitely use it. We would use it to guard ourselves. We would use it to advance wise counsel. So it's important that we receive the right kind of counsel, which means that I need to be careful whom I receive that counsel from. Yes or no? Yeah. Because Psalm 1 and verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So we know that's godly counsel. We know that's ungodly counsel. So, I dare not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. 
you know, we read out the marriage bans, and um, you know, they are actually going through Kenneth and Rajalakshmi. They're going through a um, you know marriage preparation course, which is mandatory here at ABC, and they're going through this time of you know understanding marriage and so on. When I got married, uh, we had two days, two sessions, okay, of marriage preparation. And but I'm really, really grateful for those two sessions. Some. You know, uh, Reverend C.A. Benjamin, who heads FIBA right now, he, he was the one who took us, uh, took me and my wife through the marriage preparation. Very valuable, very useful, okay? Uh, the reason I'm saying this is I <coughs> we've finished, the wedding service got over, and uh, uh, a quaint church, uh, you know, very 100-year-old church in, in Coimbatore called All Souls Church, finished, came out, and uh, yeah, I think we, just, we went home to change and uh, not really change, just to refresh. No photography session, nothing. They said, okay, you need to go there and then come. So we didn't change. Uh, we went there and I remember a relative of mine, okay, um, so he came and he said, you know, I know about you. You need to take charge. About take charge of your wife. Okay, you need to have control, keep full control. Uh, was that godly counsel? What do you think? <laughs> Some of you are saying yes. <laughs> you know, so the Bible warns against ungodly counsel. Right? So take charge. Be, in, be the man, you know, control. Don't let the upper hand go. I know you're a soft guy and all that. So that was the counsel I received. Immediately after stepping out of the church service, in between service and reception. So, the Bible warns us about ungodly counsel. You know, where is it coming from? Is it godly? Is it ungodly? Does it come from people who have a deep, time-tested, proven walk with God and who will speak based on the authority of God's word and in submission to the Holy Spirit? Because an ungodly counsel might seem very attractive. An ungodly counsel might seem, hey, this really works. Yeah, in the short term, you know, yeah, it works. And uh, it might seem, hey, it's yielding results. Come on, I'm in control now. I'm in charge now. You know, food on the table and everything. You know, it's, but it does not fulfill the purpose of God. We know that it's not from God. And it is ungodly. And the Bible warns us about that. So it might seem attractive, it might seem less expensive, it might seem quicker, but it's an ungodly counsel at the end. Now, if you want counsel for a medical condition in your body or something, you know, fix some leak at home, and the pastor is not the right person, <laughs> right? Um, you need to go to the expert in that field, right? To, to get counsel from, and that's fine. As long as the counsel that we receive is not against the principles and the precepts of God. Right? It's not against the ways of God. It's not against the standards of God. So, so that's the thing. We can definitely you know, um, go to experts and provided they're not in instructing us in anything that is ungodly. Okay. The second thing about um, Godly counsel is be willing to be corrected. Ooh, that's a, that's a big one. That's a big one. Because many times, the hindrance we face in receiving guidance is, I've already made up my mind what I want. You know, our, uh, our daughter, when we, I don't know if I shared this, but I'm just, uh, share it again. Our daughter, when, you know, when, we, when she was very small, we used to ask, okay, uh, she said, I'm hungry. Okay. So, We'll say, okay, we just like to tease her for some time. So we say, okay, here's some curd rice, here's some. No, 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 I'm hungry. Okay, would you like some idlis, you know? No, no, I'm hungry. And finally, we find out what she wants. Okay, maybe it's a burger or a pizza or something, you know, or some fries. But, you know, she, in her mind, she's already made up. This is, this is what I want. You know, many times, there could be some guidance there could be some godly counsel coming our way, but we've already made up. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. And that's a great hindrance for receiving that counsel, right? And unless 
that council affirms what I already believe or what I already want, then you know, we, we, we're not really accepting it. We're not receiving it. Or maybe it's a strong word, maybe it's a correction, right? I remember in our, in a, in our youth group, you know, growing up, we used to meet every Saturday for prayer, right? Just behind church, every Saturday meet for prayer. And, and, uh, and it would go on for about an hour, worship, prayer, and then we leave. And one particular Saturday, I remember that, um, you know, that whole week or maybe that month, I, I was just living my own life and, you know, just missing a lot of things. And, and that day, I couldn't pray. Didn't have confidence to go before God. I couldn't pray. And so this youth leader, he will actually call out, okay, why don't we pray for this? Why don't we pray for this? One by one, the prayer points. And I didn't feel like praying. I just kept quiet that entire one hour. And after that one hour of prayer, and he was just going home, and he said, uh, so, so Jake Mar, what happened? Today you were very quiet. I said, uh, I don't know. I think I was just tired. I, 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 just, uh, I don't know. I didn't feel like it. But, you know, he saw through. He said, I think you need to check your life. How did you live your life? Check it. It was a counsel. It was a correction. I got immediately very upset, very angry. You know, how dare he say that? As if he knows how I lived. But the fact is, that was from the heart of God. Have you checked your life? Check your life. Many times we don't like correction. Like we don't like to be corrected. And that becomes a great hindrance. So if you're willing to be corrected, there is godly counsel coming our way. And the beautiful thing is this, that it'll be just that right thing that we needed. You know, if you've tried fixing a you know, jigsaw puzzle, thousand pieces, right? And that one piece is not or that corner there, and you're trying to f figure out that piece, and it's not there. And then you finally find it. Godly counsel is like that. It completes the picture. Solves that thing that we are actually struggling with. So, we can do what we need to do in order to receive it. Receive that counsel. Um, and scripture warns us about, about not receiving correction as well. Uh, Proverbs 12 and verse 1, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Proverbs 13 and verse 18, poverty and shame would come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards a rebuke will be honored. <coughs> he who re uh, regards a rebuke will be honored. Okay, so let's be willing to receive correction as well. So that could be godly counsel coming our way, and that could be God's guidance coming our way. Okay, then the other thing is the counsel of godly parents. Okay, the counsel of godly parents. Many times, maybe, you know, most of us have gone past that stage, but anyway, I just, let me say that again. Many times we don't receive counsel because it's coming from our parents. Okay? Um, so maybe a friend said, you know, the same thing, very same thing. And we go back and say, you know, he said, she said, this, 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 and I'm doing it. The very same thing the parents would have said, and we're like, ah, oh, what do they know? You know, very interesting quote by Mark Twain. Uh, apparently he said this. You know, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished as how much the old man has learned in seven years. <laughs> There's an article called Wake Up and Smell the Coffee by Ann Landers. I'm sure you would have read it, but let me just read. You know, four years, <coughs> you know, it says daddy, but then, you know, you can use it for mothers as well. Four years, my daddy can do anything. Seven years old, my daddy knows a lot, a whole lot. Eight years, my father doesn't know quite everything. Twelve years, oh well, naturally father doesn't know that either. Teenage years, father, hopelessly old-fashioned. Going into the twenties, oh, that man is out of date. What did you expect? Twenty for mid-twenties, he knows a little bit about it, but not much. Going into the thirties, Maybe we ought to find out what dad thinks. Mid-30s, a little patience, 
Let's get dad's assessment before we do anything. You reach 50, I wonder what dad would have thought about that. He was pretty smart. 60 years, my dad knew absolutely everything. Come on, it's come full circle now. 65, I'd give anything if dad were here so I could talk this over with him. I really miss that man. You know, before we reach that stage, right now in between, God has given or taken parents through you know, experience and wisdom and all that and learnings that we can get. I remember talking to my dad and he was correcting me. Right? Uh, I did something, he was correcting me. I remember just sitting there, I, I didn't, and it was like everything that he said was just going over my head. And he went on for about maybe 45 minutes, right? 45 minutes. And all the while I'm thinking, wow, how, I, how, how does he have so much to say? That's all I was thinking, wow, he's, he's got so much to say about this one thing that I did or didn't do, you know? We, we go through all that stage, but the fact is that God has established, especially godly parents, parents to, who walk with God, parents to have a heart that's tender to God, parents to have the word of God in them. Like when they counsel, let's receive that. Let's receive that. Proverbs 13, 1, a wise man heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A scoffer, one who mocks one who holds instructions in contempt. Proverbs 1, verses 8 to 9, My son, hear the instruction of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother, for there will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. So, one way to honor our parents, you know, we said, we need to honor our parents. One way to honor is to receive godly counsel. And again, I'm saying godly counsel. We're talking about godly counsel from godly parents, of course. Anything that does not contradict the word of God. Anything that is, you know, something that is godly and not ungodly. Right? So, so that's something. We, godly counsel. God will lead us. He will guide us through counsel. Godly counsel. The other thing, second thing, second part of it is that God uses our renewed minds to guide us. Okay, renewed minds. So what do we mean by that? You know, our minds can be, we can be, we can have a natural mind in the sense, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14 says, a natural man does not receive the things of God, things of the spirit. And the reason is this, because they are spiritually discerned. So a natural man could be a person who does not know God, or who thinks, you know, in natural, rational ways only, is not open to the things of God, he cannot receive it because they are spiritually discerned. So that's a natural mind. Secondly, we could have a, a carnal mind. Romans chapter 8 talks about that. Let's read that verse, Romans 8 and verse 7. Um, uh, that verse is there. Um, okay, Romans 8 and verse 7 says, The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So, so, here's a mind which is carnal, meaning fleshly. Okay? It's always thinking of the desires of the flesh, fulfilling the appetites of the flesh and the body. Okay? So the Bible says that that kind of a mind is not subject to the law of God, is actually an enemy of God. Why? Because even if God speaks that mind will reject it. That mind will automatically cancel it out and say, hey, this is, this is not something that I'm comfortable with, so I reject it, right? So the thing we need to understand is we could have these kinds of minds, but the fact is that God who created us wants us to use our mind. Amen. Amen. So just because we are believers, spirit-filled, walking in faith, does not mean that we don't have to use our minds. In fact, God, with our renewed mind, God wants to guide us. Okay. So let's look at um, a couple of verses. Um, 
here, Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 to 2, right? Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the last part of that second verse, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, saying let your mind be renewed. So what does that mean? Which means that if I think a certain way about, you know, about maybe this person, about this action, and it's not in line with the word of God, Okay? Now I receive the truth from God's word. So I renew it. I renovate it. I renovate my mind. I, I take those old things out. I shift those things out. And I say, okay, this is going to be my new furniture now. This is where, you know, this is going to be that wall hanging. Because this is the truth. Right? Just, I'm just discarding these things. These things are of no use. They are broken. I just renovate my mind with the truth of God's word. So, so we have that picture, right? We, we discard those things which are not true and we re renew our mind with the word of God, with the truth of God's word. So, so what happens when we renew our mind? That we may prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that word prove in the Greek means to test, to examine, and to recognize something as something to be genuine after the examination, which means that I need to use my mind. And it's after renewing my mind to God's word. So which means I'll be able to prove, I'll be able to test and examine, not with a carnal mind. Right? So if I have a carnal mind or a fleshly mind, my standards will be different. It will not be according to the word of God. So what I test, what I examine, will not be in line with the word of God. Yes or no? Yeah. So, the word of God, Paul writes and he says, you know, you renew your mind and then to prove the will of God. To prove the will of God so that God can guide you. Secondly, Hebrews 5 and verse 14 says, solid food belong to those who are of full age, that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Okay, can we read that again? Okay. Solid food belongs to those who are of full age, who are mature. Those who by reason of use have their senses or their organs of perception, judgment. They, they, are, they, are, they have their senses exercised, which means I do it again, again and again, in order to discern good and evil. So, uh, you know, several versions of the same verse uh, give us a better understanding. You know, if you want uh, the easy, uh, easy to read version, it says, solid food is for people who have grown up. From their experience, they have learned to see the difference between good and evil. Good News Bible says, solid food, on the other hand, is for adults who through practice are able to distinguish between good and evil, which means that the renewed mind has the ability to distinguish. As I practice, as I use it, to distinguish, right? You know, um, can I play the keyboard, okay? So, you know, you have this, um, okay, it's off, I think, um, master volume. Okay, I think this is a C chord, okay? Now, you know, I need to look at the keyboard to play this, right? I need to look at the keyboard, okay, this is C, this is F, is it, is it F? C, F, G. Okay. Now what happens when I practice, when I keep practicing? When I keep practicing, you know, there's something called muscle memory. You know, my mind is being renewed. Hey, this is C. This is F. Hey, this is G. I'm, a, I'm as good as Dilu. C. just practicing by reason of use who have their senses practiced to distinguish what is good. You know, pretty soon I can be talking 
and I can play, I can sing, I might make a few mistakes, but, but the thing is this, you know, when we practice, by reason of use, we have our senses exercised, which means we have, we have to exercise our minds, we have to use our minds, which means our minds, first of all, needs to be renewed. We can't do it with a carnal mind. We can't do it with a natural mind which rejects the things of God. So, that's why Paul says, um, another, another verse, and um, I think we are almost nearing the end. Um, seat bells, if you want, please buckle up. Okay, Ephesians 5, and verses 8 to 10. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Verse 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Verse 10, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. <coughs> Verse 17, that same chapter. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Just want to turn your attention to verse 10. It says, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And that word there, the, the Greek there again, which means uh, find out, which means examine, prove, check out, you know, test out, discern, find out. We take a particular course of action or a decision, find out what is acceptable to the Lord. And the second word we see there, acceptable, which means, you know, when we say acceptable, we normally, we tend to think of, you know, 40%. Okay, pass, accepted, I got it. But that word acceptable here means, you know, something that's fully agreeable and well-pleasing to the Lord. Finding out what is fully agreeable and well-pleasing to the Lord in a course of action, in a choice that we made to, need to make. Find that out. Use our minds. Use our renewed mind. Use our renewed thinking. Find that out. And verse 17, do not be unwise. Meaning, do not be unwise, meaning do not be without reason, do not be without sense, do not be without intelligence or act rashly, but understand. And that's another interesting word, understand, which means bringing two, you know, maybe combatants together, like two wrestlers together. Okay, each wants to win. Each has an opinion, each wants to win. Maybe it's, there are two opposing views, but bringing that together, understand what the will of the Lord is. It's amazing, right? Understand, use our mind, find out and the will of the Lord. So the renewed mind brings in any, every situation or any situation the ways and the thoughts of God. So that's the why. So powerful. And that's why we cannot let our mind be, you know, the devil's playground. Because a renewed mind is really a weapon. It's so powerful. It just latches on to the truth of God. When it latches on to the truth of God, the actions will follow. The speech will follow. The thoughts will follow. And you realize that a whole course, the course of our life changes. And that's why Paul writes and he says, be transformed. He's saying not about just small change. He's talking about great change, big change. And God brings in his guidance. God is able to bring in his guidance. So we looked at two things. Uh, one is godly counsel. And then uh, we looked at um, the renewed mind through which we receive um, the counsel of God. We receive guidance from God. And, uh, and I, I hope that that expands our understanding of God's guidance, right? We might think of God's guidance as something very fuzzy and maybe without logic. And, and sometimes it is. You know, it is God's surprise that he says, do this. You know, to Philip, he says, you know, leave that revival that's happening in Samaria and go to this wilderness. Go. And God will do that. But the fact is that he has established this also. Amen. Maybe there are some of us saying, you know, I don't get any visions. I don't get any, I don't hear anything. But you're a person who, who thinks, you know, get your mind renewed to the word of God. It's something very powerful that we have to receive guidance from God. Amen. So let's, let's shall we pray? And there are some things that we can pray. Uh, maybe, you know, as we bow our heads, we can, 
Um, Dilu, if you can just come play. Just, just. Um, maybe as we bow our heads, we can say, God, um, I just want to receive godly counsel from you. That missing piece, that wisdom that changes, alters everything completely, that solves that problem, you know, that solution. God, I want to be a, a recipient of that, God. I want to be willing to receive. I don't want to prejudge people, the kind of people that you might use to bring in that counsel. You know, we can also say, you know, if we, we've been the kind who, who've been like rejecting parents' counsel, um, maybe because they overloaded you with instruction, you know, that happens, right? And we say, okay, I, I just want to reject. Uh, but God wants to remind you that it's because of concern and it's not because of anything else. So, from parents, you know, we can receive. And I believe that God wants us to be those vessels through Him, through whom He can bring that counsel. Which means that He wants a history with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants us, you and me, to be full of His Word. So that He can use us to bring counsel, to bring godly counsel to people when there's a need. Because He knows His children. He knows who needs what. And he's looking to us and he's saying, you know, can I use you? Can I use you? So we can go before God and say, Lord, I'm willing to make that adjustment. I'm willing to seek you. I'm willing to walk with you closely than ever before, God. So maybe we can pray that. The other thing that we can pray is say, God, you know, I don't want to be a person with a, with a natural mind or I don't want my mind to be ruled by fleshly desires and appetites, Lord. A carnal mind. I don't want to be a person who's not subject to the law of God. I don't want to be a person who's in rebellion with the ways of God. But I want to surrender. And maybe, you know, intentionally we can say, Lord, I want to renew my mind. I want to know what the truth is. I want to discard my old ways of thinking which are contrary to your word, which are ungodly. Let my mind be renewed. And it'll be like that filter that filters out anything that's ungodly. And it can be a powerful weapon. it out and say, Lord, here's my heart, here's my life. Speak what is true, God. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my Lord, I, I receive it, Lord. Speak what is true. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord. Oh, here's my life, Lord. Oh, God, here's my life. Lord, 
as a church, God, we, we just submit ourselves, we surrender ourselves. We thank you, God, for establishing this in the body, God. Yes, Master, we, we just um, Lord, discard all pride and preconceived notions and a lot about people. And yes, Lord, we know that you would choose, oh God, people who have a close walk with you and you would speak, bring your counsel. And so, God, we surrender, we submit ourselves. And we give our lives, Lord, totally into your mighty hands, that you would speak, that you would, Lord, guide us. And may we be a people who would listen and obey God. We thank you, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, have a great uh, Sunday and a great week ahead. Uh, we're just going to the swimming pool. We have the water baptism over there. So you're welcome to join us as well. God bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.